Hi guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video we're going to talk about the vegan keto diet, what it is, why I'm doing it, and my experience doing it for three months. But first, if you're new here, hi, my name is Dai. I am a yoga teacher and movement educator with over 20 years experience in the health and wellness industry. I am dedicated to helping you live a healthier, a fitter, a stress-free, and a happier life. Yes, seriously. If that sounds something that you're on board for, then subscribe. If you had asked me about a year ago what my diet was, I would have said that I was leaning more towards a high-carb vegan. I definitely enjoyed all the rice, the grains, the carbs, some of the junk food. And I'll be honest, I still think that that is a really great diet. However, all of that changed back in December of 2019 when I was made aware of a research paper on polycystic kidney disease and the keto diet. Yes, I have polycystic kidney disease. If you want more information about PKD, I have left a link in the description to the PKD Foundation and to the research study. Now, I admit that I was pretty skeptical when I first heard about this study, but I attended the webinar and I read through all of the research and it is really promising, guys. I've seen results from people who have tried this and their GFR, their kidney function, has increased by 15 to 20%. In the study, the results were that the also the cysts and the size of the kidneys reduced. I'm gonna leave a link to that study down in the description. Now, rather than just go out and just straight try keto, what I decided to do was do more research. I bought a couple of cookbooks, I scoured online for recipes, and I also joined some Facebook groups. Because I decided that all of this was just a diet change, what harm could it have? Big caveat here, I did clear this with my nephrologist. Make sure that if you're doing a diet change and you have kidney disease, that you check with your nephrologist. So what is vegan keto? Firstly, let's clear up the misconception that a keto diet has to have a lot of animal products. It does not. It is not paleo. So, previously, my calorie intake was 70% carbohydrates, 20% protein, 10% fat. When I went keto, it switched to 70% fat, 20% protein, and 10% carbohydrate. It was pretty much the reverse of just swapping over the percentages of carbohydrate and fat. So for me as an ethical vegan, my question was, could I do this vegan keto? And the answer is yes, there's a lot of people already out there doing it. So I was super happy. So at the beginning of the new year, I started this new diet program and I spent a few days tracking my macros on chronometer. If you're not familiar with Chronometer, it's an app that you can track on your phone or your computer and it tracks all of your macros for you. I actually ended up paying for a subscription because I enjoyed it so much. And the really good thing is that it tracks your net carbs and your net carbs are your carbohydrates minus your fiber so that I don't have to do any math, which is a good thing. Especially because there are carbs hidden in almost everything. Seriously, it's scary. So how do you know that you're in ketosis? So the way I see it is that you can either just decide by tracking your macros that that's good enough for you, you're at 10% carbs and you're just happy and you just assume that you're in ketosis, or you can use a method of testing. You can test either by blood, by breath, or by urine. I chose to use the urine strips just because that they were easier and cheaper. <laughs> Gonna be honest and I will leave a link to those down below, but in about seven days, I ended up being in ketosis quite easily. Using chronometer and the urine strips, I was able to kind of juggle my carbohydrate level, and for me, my sweet spot for coming out of ketosis is around 12% carbohydrates. So as long as I stay under that, I seem to be in ketosis just fine. Which on a typical day, for me, 12% is around 30 to 35 grams of carbohydrate. So what changed in my diet? As I mentioned, my total carbohydrates that I was having now to stay in ketosis was around 30 grams. There's 27 grams of carbohydrate in a banana, and I was having two bananas in my smoothie for breakfast. Things changed quite a lot for me. 
Gone were my lunches of burrito bowls, of rice, of beans, of curry, of potatoes. Oh my god, I loved potatoes. Those days were gone. In came the high fat coconut cream curries. In came nuts, chia, seeds, and basically all the things that I'd previously been a little bit stricter with in my diet. I now also eat dark chocolate every day. One thing that did surprise me is the amount of vegetables I was able to eat on vegan keto because I heard all the time in my research that people were just not eating vegetables and it's really easy to get your veggies in. Just choose your low carbohydrate veggies. Cabbage, cauliflower, they're great. I've eaten more cabbage and cauliflower in the last three months than I probably have in my whole life previously. And you know what? I've discovered that I really love raw cabbage. So one absolutely major change for me was that I had to start adding salt to my diet. Because there's less processed food in your keto diet and your body is flushing everything through a little bit quicker, the electrolytes get flush with it. So electrolytes are important because they avoid the keto flu. What were my struggles and what is keto flu? For anyone that researches keto, the first thing that you will see is that people are just like, oh my god, the keto flu, it was so bad. Basically, this is flu-like symptoms from lack of electrolytes and honestly, I got none of that. I think I had a headache for two days and I increased my sodium, like I said earlier, and passed through it really easily. So let's talk about the struggles of vegan keto and maybe even keto in general. One big struggle is that it's so hard to eat out. At the end of my first month, we went to Disney World and thankfully we got a cabin at Fort Wilderness where we could self cater because there was nothing at the parks that I could eat, which was a real shame because they have really good vegan options now. The other thing is that you really do have to plan because you cannot just come home, make yourself a sandwich and go. Those days are gone. So what are the benefits that I saw following the vegan keto diet? So in my 20 years experience as a fitness professional, I'd always been told that calories in versus calories out was how you juggle your weight management. It's not true. In the first two weeks of the keto diet, I lost eight pounds. Now, I didn't plan to lose eight pounds, that is not my goal, but I lost eight pounds. Before you ask, yes, my calorie intake was the same. I've been tracking my calories all through December and into January. My calories remained the same. My exercise remained the same. The only thing I changed was my diet. So after the two weeks, I made a little adjustment, increased my calories, and I stayed, I plateaued at my weight, which was good. But if you're interested in a diet for weight loss, keto might be your thing. So one thing that I really found interesting was the fact that I was just not hungry. Previously, I always thought that it was the fiber, the whole grains that kept you full, and it's not. It's the fat. The fat keeps you full. One of the other benefits that I noticed was that weight loss, that eight pounds, that all came off pretty much the same area, right on my waist. After years of not having a waist, of not having that little dip go in, I now had a cinch at my waist. How did it affect my polycystic kidney disease? All right, so this is where it gets difficult because I had planned to do this experiment for three months purely on the fact that my tests, my labs, were due at the end of March. If you're watching this in the current April of 2020, then you'll know that right now we're dealing with a pandemic. So I am not going to get my lab work done and risk exposing myself to coronavirus. Thank you very much. So how did it affect my PKD? The results are out. On the science. My anecdotal results, however, I feel great. <laughs> it's been a bit of a shock, but I feel good. If I'm tracking and I'm solidly on my macros, I feel amazing. 
However, there was one experience when we were on the tail end of our Florida trip where I felt like crap and it was kidney related. Now, was this because I didn't follow my diet 100%? I wasn't sticking to the previous diet that I'd been doing the last like four weeks? Or was it because that I'd succumbed to the diet soda trap? I really, this is a lesson that I need to learn that I cannot drink soda. If you have PKD, let me know. Is soda like a trigger for you? Because my kidneys do not like it at all. Seems, seems like a lesson that I'm just determined to repeat over and over again. So one interesting thing is that my left kidney has always been a little more forward than the normal position of a kidney. And because of its size, I can feel it from the outside of my body. And before, it was always a little bit hard and uncomfortable. Now, it's squishier, it's softer, it's more pliable, and there's less discomfort. That's promising, right? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of shocked, but it's promising. Once all this pandemic stuff is done, I'm definitely going in and getting my lab results. So the real question is, would I continue the diet? So once this pandemic hit and I realized I was not gonna get my labs done after this three months, I had a choice. I could either continue and just carry on with the vegan keto diet, or I could stop and waste the last three months work. I decided to continue. So it was just in the last few weeks that I noticed that the laboratory that did the original keto PKD study was asking for case study patients. And your girl signed up. So I am one of the case study patients for this new research paper. This will give me a reason to continue the vegan keto diet to see if I get any changes and it will also provide some education and research on whether this does help PKD. But the biggest difference is in how I feel. I have no bloat in my belly, I feel like my clothes fit better, my yoga pants are looser around the waist, but would I recommend it? If you're doing it for health, absolutely. If you need to lose some weight, if you have some kind of medical issue, it might be worth a try, but always check with your medical professional first. But be aware that it takes research, it takes planning, it takes preparation. If you're somebody that's working 60 hours a week and just wants to grab and go with your food, this is not going to be the diet for you. Personally, for me, the, the benefits are worth the trade-off. Your mileage may vary. So, let me know in the comments, have you tried keto before? Are you following any specific diet for health reasons? Are you interested in vegan keto recipes? So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up for some instant karma, and it helps the YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already, and hit the notification bell for updates. And remember, my loves, that karma is only a bitch if you are. So be nice, be kind, and be the change that you want to see in the world. Bye! Let's put the light on. Lopsided. A bit wonky. However, all of that changed in December 9, 29, blah, 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 blah. Nah, we're still wonky. God, why is it so hot? Okay. 20% pro... I got the... Re so at the beginning of the... So, as I mentioned, I was very skeptical... Skeptical? So as I mentioned... No, 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 stop smiling. So, stop smiling. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. Ooh, cracking up. Wee! So, it. Stop opening your mouth so wide you can see the back of your gob.